I'm going to be talking about managing your teaching responsibilities with your other roles in your life. So first of all, I'm going to talk about my experiences. So I'll use a lot of my personal examples and hopefully some of them will apply to your own experiences in the future. So first of all, course preparation. For my course, I taught health, illness, and society for sociology. And uh, I had to design the course. So what you really need to do if you're designing a course is you need to do with do the way that works best for you. So what actually I got advice from Julia, she said what I do is I start a few weeks before the class and write all the lectures in a two to three week span. You know that at least you have the bare bones of your lectures done before you start the course. And I thought that was a really good way to go about it and that's the way I went about it because then you know get really bogged down or stressed during the course of the semester when you're teaching, at least you have the bare bones of your lectures done, so you're not going to panic if you get a really busy week. And that way, during, uh, during the week, two days before you teach, you can go back to the lecture you created, you have time to prepare it and make it polished, and also revise it based on how the course is going or the needs of the students. So you go back to it, but you know the bare bones are there, so that you're not constantly spending only time preparing the course. You're, you have time to do other things in your own research. So that was the method I used and I found that worked really well because I've talked to other people who've been first time lectures and they said, do you find yourself only doing course preparation? So it's important that you manage a way that works for yourself where you're not just doing course preparation because you're going to have to manage your other research responsibilities or your other personal roles. So that was a way that I chose that worked really well. Um, now another good hint is know your deadlines and the regulations associated with your department. So mark submission, know when your marks are due, how much time you have after each exam until your marks have to be submitted because that's something that's very important. You want to make sure that your marks aren't submitted late because the department will obviously not be happy with that. So you want to keep them happy. So know those regulations going into it. Also, for new sessional lectures, often there's guidelines or even a, a guide that uh, the department has on hand to give to you. So, if you have things like what's expected of you, different regulations, and course expectations. Also, something that you have to put in your course syllabus is regulations for what happens to students if they're caught plagiarizing or caught cheating. You yourself should go over these regulations just so that you're familiar with them. For example, if someone's caught cheating on an exam, it could be at your university that two people need to see this person cheating. So both you and your teaching assistant need to see the person cheating for it to go anywhere. Or for plagiarism, what counts, like what steps are taken if you find someone plagiarizing, things like that. So it's a good idea that you know that going into it because it'll help manage your own teaching responsibilities because you'll know what to do in that kind of scenario. Also, in terms of regulations, know when you accept the teaching responsibilities, whether or not you have to prepare the course from scratch or whether or not you're taking over for someone else. Because if you're not prepared to put in the time to prepare your own class or if you find someone else's lectures too confusing, then it could be difficult. So you want to know based on how comfortable you are with the material, what expectations there are of you. Fitting in research, obviously that's very important. You want to know what expectations your department has on you uh, as in terms of output. So some departments really frown on graduate students earlier in their career teaching. You're going to want to be aware of whether or not that applies to you. Are they happy you're teaching? Do they expect you to publish an article during the course of your teaching? How far do they want you to be on your PhD thesis? You want to make sure that you meet those deadlines. Obviously, you don't want to be <laughs> getting into trouble and dedicating too much time to this one role. So again, you're going to find have to find your own methods with this. My own example, personally, is that for my research, for my thesis, or for whatever I'm working on at the time, you want to give yourself a page limit per day. That's what I do. So every day I say, if I get two pages done, then I get to stop writing and do whatever. So it could take eight hours, or it could take an hour. 
but as long as I get the page limit for the day that I set aside, then you're done. Some people, obviously, that won't work for. Some people prefer to do work a solid eight hour work day, whatever you get done in that day. Whichever method you choose, just make sure it works for your own personal working style. Um, now balancing student demands. This also goes with what Ali was saying a little bit. So at the beginning, you don't even have to frame it as strict, but setting out your regulations really specifically so that people know what to expect. And an example of how to manage your, your time properly is tell the students, for example, when you'll be answering emails. It could be that you don't mind answering emails at all hours of the night and that you're really open to students <coughs> contacting you like this. But it could be that you don't think it's reasonable that a student emails you at 2 in the morning the day before an assignment is due and then seems like you're being unreasonable if they don't get a response before 4 a.m. <laughs> which, which you know that happens. So. For example, what you could say, even in the syllabus or the first day of class, is that I'll answer emails before 8 o'clock at night, or I'm going to be answering all my emails between 2 and 4 in the afternoon, so that if you don't get an in by that, you're getting a response the next day. And that way, they, they also won't react to you like you're being unreasonable or that you're shirking your, your duties if you tell them what to expect. You could also say, like, if I don't answer emails on the weekend, you know, whichever works for you or whatever you're comfortable with as long as obviously you're not saying, I'm going to answer my emails once every week, and if you don't get that, <laughs> you know, then it's going to be two weeks after that. Something reasonable. Um, set out, again, clear expectations with office hour or availability. Some professors have courses that are things like required courses or something with a lot of stats or methods might have a lot of students coming to office hours. So you can either dedicate specific office hours or think about whether or not you're comfortable by doing extra office hours by appointment. Just think about what you're willing to put into it before, so that the students know what to expect as well. Now, um, managing work and life balance. So this is things like managing your own stress level. Make sure that you get enough downtime when you're at home. So with this research and this teaching, managing those things, make sure you take enough time for yourself and for your family perhaps take up deep breathing exercises. <laughs> or kickboxing. Yes. Exercises. <laughs> Whatever works for you, make sure you're not too stressed because also, again, going with what Ali was saying, you want to make sure you're always professional with your students. So if you get too stressed out and someone comes to you with a question or they're upset, if you're too stressed that, and you're not taking enough time to you know, relax, kickbox, <coughs> <laughs> taking a nice class, then you're going to maybe react in a way that's not necessarily professional. You're going to be too emotional. You're going to be angry when you shouldn't necessarily be up here. You should be more around here. So you're going to want to watch that as well. At the same time, something that I've encountered, both as a TA and an instructor, is that students have very high stress levels sometimes. I've, I've had a lot of students come to me and they have problems with anxiety or things like that. So one way manage that is to always have the number on hand for the your institution's counseling services so every university has a counseling service or you know it should so you can have that number on hand so that you know where to send the people so that you're not dealing with a situation that you're not necessarily trained to deal with because students will come to you with certain emotional problems that you need to take into consideration that you might not necessarily know what to do with. Um, now, finally, a way to manage it, um, your, your own stress level, is to find a mentor. So this can be either a professor in your department, or it can also be fellow PhD students. How many people here are from the University of Waterloo? Okay, no one. <laughs> but uh, what I did during my first role as an instructor was I joined the coffee group that's held by the Center for Teaching Excellence. So that brought together a number of first-time instructors in a group so that you could share in your problems. And I found that helped out a lot because you can talk about big problems, but you can also just talk about small issues that come up weekly. So I'll give you a brief, few brief examples of what we talked about. One, one week we talked about things like how to deal with a teaching assistant who won't 
made your mark deadline. Some people had <laughs> some people had TAs. Actually, quite a few people in the group who weren't marking when they were supposed to be marking. And again, that as the instructor comes back on you with uh, remembering your uh, mark submission deadline. So it can be hard to manage that because you don't always have someone who's really interested in being the best TA you've ever had. <laughs> so that can be difficult. And another thing we talked about, you can, it's great to get a group like that together because you can even just bounce small things off. So I brought up the one example that I have is that I was going to get married and I had it planned to miss a week of class and I already had it in the syllabus that I was having a guest speaker come in that week. And so I asked the group, should I tell them that I'm going away to get married or should I just tell them I'm going to a conference or something? <laughs> Keep it professional. But everyone in the group was like, no, you can tell them you're going away to get married. They'll think it's nice. And so I did and they were all like, aww. <laughs> so it's just nice to have a group like that together that you can bounce ideas off of. So since none of you are from the University of Waterloo, your, your school could have something similar, or if not, then you may want to think about just informally trying to set one up yourself, because I thought it was a great way to get support and to get ideas off of people who were in the same situation. And also to hear their problems and try to work around it so that you don't have the same problem. So that person has a problem with their TA marking, so I may need to make sure I'm very clear with my TA when it comes to marking. Things along that way or someone's saying that they have too much time spent on their course prep, so I want to make sure that I don't spend way too much time on my course prep. 